too much stuff in here. Yeah, this isn't going to work. This isn't going to work anymore. Just... Okay. Get it together. Wait. Okay. Oh. I need a new binder. This is my new binder and basically it looks big and bulky because it is. I needed something bigger, but I needed something that I could carry easily, uh, which, so now this comes into play. Um, it's actually, you know, I can have it like on my shoulder if I want, or I can carry it by this. So I really like that because then my pages don't get torn and things aren't falling out, which was my main problem. So you guys won't be able to see really detailed stuff inside the binder. I try to upload all of the things I have in my binder to the binder group anyway, because it's no secret. I want to share everything with you guys. I mean, why not? So when you open it, I'm just going to fix it a bit here because it's pretty big so when you open it it's kind of large and I've got a little pocket here and I keep some things like my pens and a few highlighters and then I have another bag where I really keep all of my pens and highlighters but I want to show you guys this one isn't it cute it's adorable this is my little stamp with my credentials and my name because I'm lazy. I snapped about this on Snapchat once and someone was asking me about it. So girl, I told you I was going to talk about it. So here it is. I purchased this from Amazon. The links will be below in the information box. This is an R-Cat for arrhythmias. And basically, it's a laminated... Um, handout type thing that has all of the different arrhythmias or some of the different arrhythmias the more common ones that you may encounter you could put the EKG up to this and like compare it RCAT stands for rapid cardiac analysis tool so it's basically a little tool you can use that can help you to uh, interpret EKGs the very first page the front is basically basic things about EKGs sinus arrhythmia sinus with ST depression and it really shows you where that depression would be and then sinus rhythm with ST elevation and it shows you where the ST segment is how, how far above the baseline it is so and just a couple more so you guys can get an idea pretty common ones well they're not common because when they happen you know um, it's pretty scary but sustained ventricular tachycardia I actually had a, that happen to a patient when I worked on a spinal cord injury unit on the spinal cord injury unit and it was scary and then it even has stuff on here first degree AV block second degree degree AV block um, and other things and then on the back there are more so basically the front is the basics and then you just have the different types of rhythms in the middle and all along the back so you get some pretty good rhythms so I have this in the very front of my binder because EKGs are my weak point. My next one is the RCAT 12 
And that's basically like we talked about before. The RCAT stands for Rapid Cardiac Analysis Tool. And it shows you where the leads should be placed. And it shows you how the leads correlate with the way the EKG comes out. So the V1 lead, you, you can see there where it would be. And then the V2 lead, V3, V4, V5, V6. And it shows you here in comparison to the heart where those leads would be. And um, this is basically telling us what to look out for when someone's having a STEMI. In particular, it's basically all about STEMIs, all about um, injury to the heart. And I like this because if I ever suspect that, um, I'm sure this would help a lot. Muscle involvement may be seen in the anterior and posterior sides, and it actually shows you on a heart where that would be happening. And then, you know, it shows you in the leads what you would expect to see. So it's really nice. RCAT 12 for STEMI. So you just unzip it, and then when you open it, let's talk about the first part of the binder, which is over here. I have a lot of information here. So I have a tab for vaccines, and inside I have all of my information on vaccinations, and I have a tab for depo. We give a lot of depo provera at the clinic I work at, so you have to have the depot calendar, like you have to have it. And then um, it's just my little cheat sheet that tells me what insurances different hospitals accept. And then I have, lastly, the random part of my binder, which is basically a lot of random stuff. And I will share some of it with you guys. I have compression stockings. Um, it tells you what mild compression is, what moderate compression is, firm compression. So when you order compression stockings, this guide just kind of helps you as far as uh, what you want to order. So if you're gonna order like mild compression, 18 to 15 mmHGs, and it provides relief and minimizes tired and achy legs, prevents fatigued legs from long periods of sitting or standing, helps relieve minor swelling of feet, ankles, and legs. During pregnancy, it helps to prevent the formation of varicose and spider veins, and it helps maintain healthy, energized legs. And then it tells you for moderate compression, firm compression, and extra firm compression. So I really like this, I found it online. And then just some other things I have, steroid potency. I have information on HIV, management. I don't manage HIV. They are uh, managed by infectious disease. However, if you get a patient that is positive for HIV, there are labs that you could order in advance for the infectious disease doctor. Um, that would help the infectious disease doctor uh, when the patient comes for their first visit. And then some of the other random things I have, something on nephrolithiasis, something on headache, um, I have information on antibiotic treatment for MRSA, hypothyroidism, adenopathy in children, rashes. I have information on Coumadin management. I have information on some cardiac issues like left axis deviation treatment for conjunctivitis. So my random, the random part of my binder is basically random things that I have encountered or that I feel like I would need more information on and that is what is in that part. The other part of the binder, which is this part, and again, you guys won't really be able to see specifics, but I will tell you guys what each tab is. I'm not really gonna go through what I have in the binder because I went through that on my last updated binder, binder and P binder uh, video. And you guys can find this stuff in the MP binder group. But basically the tabs that I have in my binder, P 
pediatric tab. This I have the same tabs I had as last time. And I have the pediatric medications dosed appropriately for weight-based dosing for children. And then I have my diabetic tab. I'll, I guess I'll just randomly tell you some of the stuff I have, like how to treat low blood sugars quickly. I had a patient come in, his blood sugar was 40. And you know, after that happened, that's when this happened. So yeah, I just want to know for sure how many carbs to give a patient, you know, when they come in and they're having issues like that. I did well and the patient's fine. Um, but after that, I decided to look it up and just have that at my disposal. So all of this stuff is on diabetes and some of the things I really like how to interchange insulins is prescribing insulin and then I have the hypertension um, the hypertension divider here and JNC8 is the first algorithm that I have in this um, in this section and I have just um, individualizing antihypertensive therapy and then we go on to women's health and women's health I have the AS CCP guidelines, their algorithms on how to treat, um, how to manage a woman who has like um, an abnormal pap smear. So this right here is amazing. I also have an app on my phone about that. And then I have screening tests for women. I have information on abnormal uterine bleeding, what you need to do, when you need to refer, more algorithms on how to treat um, abnormal pap smears because you know we treat them differently. It depends on the age, it depends on whether the patient is HPV positive. So um, I really like these algorithms, they're very helpful. And I have information on clinical findings in women with vaginitis, Ella, the uh, emergency birth control. So let's move on. I have a tab on lipids. And here I have lots of information on lipid therapy and um, the guidelines on treatment for, um, you know, for elevated LDL and stuff like that. Uh, the ACC and AHA algorithm, which really helps. And it also tells you when a patient is diabetic, you know, example, if you're age 40 to 75, type 1 or type 2 diabetes, you should be on a moderate intensity statin. And then, um, yeah, and it talks about high intensity statin if you are um, if your ASCVD risk is greater than or equal to 7.5. So um, I like this algorithm because it tells you um, what to do when you have a patient with an elevated um, LDL or who, with abnormal uh, cholesterol. And then I like this little paper here. I have highlighted high intensity statins, the dose and what they are. And then moderate intensity statins, I have the dose and how much they lower cholesterol. And then the lower intensity statins, um, the dose and how much they lower cholesterol. So I really like having this. And then I have asthma and I basically, this is definitely in the binder group. I have um, like pictures of the respiratory inhalers at a glance and it tells the dosages and how it looks. And this has helped the patients too when I'm talking to them about rescue versus controller inhalers. And so they, they're they always asking me like, well, is that the red one? So this really helps. Um, in addition to that, I have all of the um, classifications for asthma severity by age, zero to four. And then I go, on to 5 to 11 and then 12 to adult and um, the stepwise approach all of that is here I have asthma action plans I have the predicted average peak flows 
but I use the app more. And we'll talk about that when I do a video on apps. I use the app more when I'm doing my peak flow estimation or peak flow prediction. And then this last um, part of my binder, I have articles here that I have used at work before because I love them so much. This sexually transmitted disease laminated paper is from the CDC and it basically tells you how to treat all of the different STDs. And um, yeah, I really like this. I like that it's laminated. So um, an infectious disease doctor gave me that. And then these articles were too thick to fit into this part of my binder. So I have like the standards of medical care and diabetes 2016. And I really like this. This is um, amazing. It just basically tells you everything you need to know about diagnosing diabetes, treating it, um, the management of it, the prevention of it. It is amazing. And then I have more information on lipids. And this is basically, again, talking about doses. It goes into depth about the differences between statins. And I really like this article, so that's why it's a part of my binder. I have the personal quick reference sheets from Rapid Interpretation of EKGs. So it just gives you some quick reference sheets on EKG, EKG interpretation. And this has helped me a lot in my practice. I have the book as well. And diabetes management issues for patients with chronic kidney disease. I've actually had to go to this um, article before uh, when I had a patient that was diabetic and she also had chronic kidney disease. So um, this is very helpful article. I've uploaded it to the binder group. The top 10 things nephrologists wish every primary care physician knew. This is amazing because when you're doing these labs and these patients come back and um, their creatinine is elevated and or they have kidney disease, what medicine should they be on? What should they not be on? It's a lot. And this bre really breaks it down how nephrologists feel about it and what they think that primary care providers should know and should do before we refer. Now, look at how much space I have left in this binder to add things. This is a three ring binder and it's a three inch binder and I have a lot more space than I had in my other ones. So I'm really happy with this one. Um, the pages don't get messed up because you see when you close it, that was my fear when I first purchased this binder. I thought pages would get crumbled up and whatnot, but really not because there's a lot of space here. And so when I zip it, let me see here, when I zip it, like nothing happens. Everything is protected. And I really like that. So this is my new binder, guys. And I love it. Your binder should be full of things that you need that will help get you through the day. So I know from practicing that I am a little weak in, I am a bit weak in diabetes. I see a lot of diabetic patients. I see a lot of asthmatics. I see a lot of people with different skin disorders and so and hypertension and hyperlipidemia. So those are some of the sections in my binder because that is my patient population and those are subjects that I want to have easy access to additional information. And as I stated before, I think in my first binder video, I like having a nurse practitioner binder because I'm a paper person and I like to just flip really quick to what I need and I, it just, it does something for me. After two years, I still use my binder and I feel lost without it, which is a little weird, but it's the truth. So even though I have amazing apps on my phone, up to date, Apocrates, 
some of the major apps, I use them a lot every day, every time I work, but I use my binder too. So your binder should fit your needs. And that's super important. So whenever I get that question, what should I put in my binder? How, you know, how do I build it? Just think about the patient population that you are seeing and where your weaknesses are. And that's what, you know, uh, tabs you should have in your binder. And if you're not practicing yet, then you can think about yourself and you can think about the things in primary care that you feel like you would need more information on. So even before starting my job, I knew that I was going to need tabs in my binder on diabetes. I knew that. I knew I would need tabs on hypertension. I knew that I would need tabs on pediatrics and skin. So the, the things that I felt weakened beforehand, I ended up having them in my binder anyway. So your binder is individualized. Everyone's binder is different. If a nurse practitioner works in dermatology, she's not gonna have tabs on hypertension and diet. Well, I don't know, she might. You know, she, she's not gonna have the same tabs that I would have working in primary care. So that's an important thing to remember that your binder is basically individualized, is what you need. And that's the beauty of it. You are creating a resource for yourself that will get you through the day because we all have different weaknesses. You know, you may be stronger in diabetes to the point where you're like, well, I don't need a diabetic, a, a tab for diabetes because I'm awesome at that. I know what to do. And for me, I would rather have a tab there with algorithms and with information and with the standards of care and stuff like that. So binders you know should be individualized and i think that is amazing i think it's great because it's your reference and it caters to your needs and that's what makes it so helpful that's what makes it so helpful for me if my binder was just a generalized thing that anyone could use i don't know if it would be so helpful for me but you know it is really helpful for me because it's what i need Okay. Um, yeah, so I hope this video helped. I hope you guys um, understand, you know, with the binder, kind of what it's for and the MP binder group. I know there are lots of people that request to join and I do a little bit of screening before I let people in just to make sure uh, that they are nurse practitioners or nurse practitioner students. I love students. Um, and I, I, um, Sometimes it takes me a while to get people in because you know I'm on YouTube and I'm on other social media platforms and I'm doing some other things. So, you know, I do see you guys, I'm working on it. And if you don't have any information on your page about being a nurse or something like that, then I do send a lot of messages like, hey, are you a nurse? Are you a nurse practitioner? Are you a student? And sometimes I don't hear back. So sometimes those people don't get accepted because I need to make sure that, you know, you're a nurse practitioner or a student. And um, the nurse practitioner binder group, the purpose of it, as I've stated before, is, you know, to help you build your binder. There are over 300 files in that group. And those files are just information that people in the group have in their binders or they've found helpful. And um, you can just print it out and put it in your binder. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And um, yeah, subscribe to my channel and uh, tell your friends about it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Love you, bye.